On October 6, 69 BC, the Battle of Tigrana Serta occurred, a part of the Third Mithridatic War, which was three conflicts between mainly the Roman Republic and the Pontic Kingdom under King Mithridates VI Eupator. However, on this occasion, the Greater Armenian Kingdom had a multi ethnic army and was to its greatest extent under Shahanshah, King of Kings, Tigranes II or Tigranes the Great. What was the background of the Mithridatic Wars, the Third Mithridatic War, and the events leading to Tigran Aserta? What was the relationship between Mithridates VI and Tigranes II? What was the battle like? What was the aftermath? Background The Mithridatic Wars was the increasing power of Pontus under Mithridates VI, mainly trade. Rome wanted to dominate the northeastern Mediterranean but saw Pontus challenging its authority. The third occurred due to piracy, and the Bithynian king Nicomedes IV wanted Bithynia to be part of Rome due to the rising threat of Mithridates wanting and showing his ambition again. After Nicomedes died, the Roman Senate accepted and made Bithynia a Roman province. Mithridates refused to accept reality and decided to contest it, which kicked off the Third Mithridatic War. Roman general and proconsul Lucius Licinius Lucullus, a veteran of the First Mithridatic War, was the overall commander of the Roman army against Mithridates VI. Initially, Mithridates lost at Cyzicus, the Rundicus River, and Cabra, he took Amisus, Sinope, and Themyscira. After his defeat at the Battle of Cabra, 72 BC, Mithridates retreated to the Armenian king Tigranes II, his son-in-law. Mithridates stayed there for twenty months before seeing Tigranes. Tigranes and Mithridates The relationship was collaborative but complicated. If Tigranes did not see Mithridates, why would he not do so for twenty months or initially give him reinforcements to retake the lost lands under the Pontic kingdom? Since he was the son-in-law of Mithridates due to his marriage with his daughter Cleopatra as Tigranes' queen and advisor, he could have accepted him as an ally not only diplomatically and militarily but through familial ties. Also, why would he not initially follow Mithridates' advice to defeat the Romans with guerrilla warfare and scorched-earth tactics against Lucullus? Certainly, Tigranes was not as informed as Mithridates, but he might feel confident due to his successes in reaching Armenia at its greatest extent, from the southern Caucasus to Syria. There was a possibility he told Tigranes of Lucullus not coming to Armenia. In addition, he might have no idea how to face the Romans like Mithridates had in the previous two conflicts. Later on, after Tigran Aserta, Tigranes heeded his advice and made the 68 BC campaign more successful, but it was not enough. Regardless, they could not stop the Roman expansion into the Near East. Finally, they had similar interests Persian culture, love of hunting, erudition, and grandiose ambitions, their grand goals were compatible and each man hated Rome, as a force of darkness and deceit, the enemy of righteousness, Mayor 9. However, they differed on governance, Mithridates had some Hellenistic influence, democracy, versus Tigranes being an absolute monarch. Whatever the case, Tigranes gave 10,000 Armenian cavalry to Mithridates and probably met privately in Tigran Aserta for three days. Mithridates told him how to defeat the Romans and dispatched his general, Taxiles, to Tigranes. Prelude to the Battle of Tigran Aserta Lucullus made his demands to Tigranes, hand over Mithridates. Lucullus' brother-in-law and staff member, Appius Claudius, met the nobles at Tigranes' court in Tigran Aserta, the Armenian capital before Artaxias, about them, the sources portrayed him as arrogant and prideful. Also, for Lucullus, the Senate did not bestow its power to him to campaign against it due to the appearance of being hawkish but more afraid of his self-aggrandizement through military victories a challenge to its authority. Regardless, Tigranes went to Antioch to see Appius and refused to concede, the effect was no longer in Lucullus' staff, and he joined Martius Rex's army in western Anatolia. Unfortunately, he failed against the pirate raids and got captured and ransomed. As a result, it caused a mutiny. Another problem was the Fimbrian or Valerian legions were close to mutiny until his intervention. 
In the winter of 70 BC, the Romans were in Ephesus, the Greek historian Plutarch's version, and crossed the Euphrates River, the Greek historian Appian of Alexandria mentioned Lucullus' intention, being against Tigranes but not his people. After passing through the river, they were in Timosa and headed to the Sophene kingdom at the north, the Antitaurus Mountains, and to Amida, part of southern Sophene. Finally, they came to Tigranocerta, which was in southern Armenia. Fortunately, the Sophene and Grodian kingdoms aided them with supplies. Initially, Tigranes had no idea about the Roman march due to expecting to campaign in the spring to attack Lycaonia and Cilicia, and it was not until a messenger gave the news. Tigranes chose his noble Mithrobarzanes to lead 2,000 cavalry to destroy the Romans and capture Lucullus and assigned another noble, Mancius, to defend it in May. Also, Lucullus gave Sornatius to the commander of the newly formed province of Pontus. When the Romans arrived at Tigranocerta, they tried to build a camp to besiege and put Lucullus' legate, Sextilius, to block the Armenians. Mithrobarzanes launched a sudden charge, but the 3,500 Roman infantry and cavalry from the Fimbrians, equally proportional, held on and dealt with it successfully due to their experience. At the same time, Tigranes was in the Taurus Mountains to recruit soldiers. Lucullus sent Sextilius and a possible auxiliary commander Murina Jr. to deal with the Armenians in a two-pronged attack, Sextilius against the Arabs and Murina against Tigranes. They won, and Tigranes lost and retreated without his baggage. Mithridates warned him not to do an open battle due to his experience against Lucullus using attrition. Ironically, he did not do it against the Armenians. Tigranes wanted his booty and concubines, so he slipped a 6,000 cavalry force to retrieve them at night. At dawn, the Thracian cavalry chased them and retook them without the treasures. During the siege, the Armenians resisted with their archers as the best asset to defend and Naphtha to burn the Roman siege equipment. Battle of Tigranocerta On October 6, 69 BC, the Battle of Tigranocerta began. Although the exact location was unknown, the river had two fords, one at the east and the other at the north. The plateau was behind the Armenian army, the Armenians were to the west, and the Romans were to the east. Murina returned to besiege Tigranocerta. The Armenian camp had divisions, some, like the Pontic general Taxiles, told him to do nothing, and others took an aggressive stance. Sources gave varied numbers of the strengths of the Armenian army. Appian gave it 250,000 infantry and 50,000 cavalry, Plutarch stated it was 50,000 infantry as cohorts and phalanxes with 55,000 cavalry, 17,000 as heavy-armored and spear-carrying cataphracts, 20,000 archers and slingers, and 35,000 engineers. The Greek historian Memnon of Heraclea said it was 80,000, but the Greek writer Phlegon of Trolleys put it as 40,000 infantry and 30,000 cavalry. Tigranes had a multi-ethnic army, Armenia, Media, Syria, Commagene, Gordiene, Sophene, Mesopotamia, Atropatene, Mardia, Adiabene, Arabia, Parthia, and Bactria, Mayor 11. Tigranes commanded the center, the Adiabene king on the left flank, and the Median king on the right. On Plutarch's account, the Roman army had 12,000 infantry, 3,000 cavalry, 1,000 archers and slingers. Appian stated it was two legions and 500 cavalry. Eutropius gave it 18,000. Many historians accepted Plutarch's version, but Eckhart disagreed due to the inconsistent numbers for the battle and the siege. Since Murina had 6,000 troops besieging Tigranocerta, the 14,000 men under Lucullus, and there were 1,000 archers and slingers, he put the strength as 22,000, not the 20,000 from Plutarch. To compound the issue, Plutarch and Senationus, besieged Tigranocerta was around 14,000 to 15,000 men, however, Renach and Eckhart correctly note that there are contradictions in Plutarch's numbers, Manadin 91. The final point was from Asturian, who correctly pointed out the Romans counting themselves but not their allies. The Romans made the first move, sending their Thracian and Galatian cavalry forward and conducting a faint retreat, 
and Taxiles knew it was a trap. The Armenians had their heavily armored and spear-carrying cataphracts, similar to the Parthian cataphracts, on the right. Simultaneously, Lucullus led about 11,000 troops, two cohorts, about 10,000, and 1,000 cavalry, slingers, and archers, to the plateau by crossing the northern ford and moving undetected. Then, he made his charge down to outmaneuver the cataphracts by attacking the horses, which surprised Tigranes. As a result, they retreated, and casualties were as little as 5,000 under Phlegon of trolleys to as many as 100,000 from Plutarch. Likely, it was close to the Asia Minor historians due to affecting the cataphracts more. Aftermath After the defeat, Menchius feared his Greek mercenaries switching sides, so he took their weapons away. Nevertheless, they suspected an arrest and execution, so they armed themselves with clubs. When the Armenians approached them, the Greeks attacked and fought their way to a section of the wall and some towers to let the Romans in, they came and sacked the city, except for the royal treasury of eight thousand talents under Lucullus' care. When it was over, he gave eight hundred drachmas per man. Despite all this, Tigranes still refused to surrender Mithridates. As for him, he went further in Armenia, and Mithridates had 2,000 from Philip Matizak to 12,000 from Duane W. Roller. In the winter of 69 BC, according to Appian, they trained 70,000 infantry and 35,000 agile, light cavalry, similar to Parthian horse archers, and they modeled the infantry on the Roman cohort and fighting style. Also, Tigranes allowed the more experienced Pontic officers to lead them due to fighting against the Romans before. In addition, they stored grain for the winter. In 68 BC, Lucullus' goal was the same, capture Mithridates. Unfortunately, in the beginning, he headed to Artaxata without provisions and indecisive skirmishes against the better prepared opposing army using attrition. In response, Lucullus had to live off the land and used scorched earth in northern Armenia. He defeated Tigranes at the Arsanias Valley, which eased the supply lines. During early winter, Mithridates won on his delaying tactics, and Lucullus decided to besiege Nisibis to get Tigranes to fight on his terms. Although he took it, he failed to get Tigranes and Mithridates to confront him. Finally, Tigranes dealt with recapturing southern Armenia and Mithridates with 4,000 Pontic and 4,000 Armenian troops to go on the offensive with harassment on the eastern Pontus Roman-controlled outposts. The Roman general Gaius Valerius Triarius assisted Cabra to save Hadrianus, and Mithridates retreated to Comana. The 68 BC campaign was inconclusive. In 67 BC, Mithridates continued his offensive. Initially, Triarius did not fight him, so Mithridates attacked Dadesa for the captured loot. Also, his intelligence system returned to normal, and received the information. As a result, Triarius fell for the bait, and Mithridates selected his battleground at Zella, a Pontic victory. Appian put the casualties at 150, while others stated as high as 7,000. It seemed closer to the other sources. After that, Mithridates retreated to Talmura to wait for Tigranes' reinforcements. He found out a Roman senator, Atidius, possibly wanted to return to the Roman side but suffered execution. Martius Rex, proconsul of Cilicia, did nothing with his fleet and three legions. Lucullus and Tigranes contacted the Parthians. They made similar concessions and asked either for neutrality or help, but the Parthian king Phraates III did not aid them. The Roman Senate hated Lucullus for wasting time, money, and men. Also, the senators suspected him of self-aggrandizing his career. Earlier in the war, his enemies exploited Mithridates' escape and the longer-than-expected war against the Armenians. From 66 to 63 BC, Pompey defeated Mithridates, and Tigranes surrendered to him in 66 BC. Mithridates went to the remnant of his Pontic kingdom and killed his son Zephyrs for collaborating with the Romans. Thus, the Third Mithridatic War ended.